Oh my gosh, look at that fish, Pete! Oh my gosh, look at that fish, Pete! There oh my god, that look at that. <laughs> Got him, you got him, you I got, got him! him. Oh, nice fish! fish. The head is what it's The head is big. That is just incredible. Look at the size of that thing. Look at that line. Come on, heart, 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 heart. Oh, my oh, god, oh my god. Welcome to John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. Today's show is brought to you by Mercury Marine, number one on the water, by Bass Pro Shops, by Frabo, innovating the outdoors, by your Toyota dealer, by Mills Fleet Farm, your fishing gear headquarters, by Yamaha, ATVs and snowmobiles, by Bitzer Creek Zip Lures, by Line and Kugels, by Menards, and by Johnsonville Brats. Welcome to John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. I'll tell you folks, it's a beautiful, warm, windy day in September and we're down on Delavan Lake and it's the annual Bass Pro Shop employee outing out of Gurney, Illinois. It's kind of a little friendly tournament, but we've got an ace in the hole with us today. I got my buddy Mike Reglevich with me from <laughs> Bass Pro Shop, but we got a Bass Pro Shop staffer with us, one of the top bass guys in the area, Dan Hayes. And Dan, I'll tell you, you know, we're going to bass fish today. And a lot of my buddies who bass fish kind of put their rods away uh, late August, early September when mm -hmm. it starts getting cool. They're making a mistake, aren't they? Absolutely. Uh, this is the second day in a, of fall, and the water's starting to cool down. The later it gets in the year, the better the fish is going to get. Really? Yeah. Um, if the water gets 52, 53 degrees, a topwater bait's one of the best things to throw in the fall. No. Right before it ices up. Absolutely. Folks, I'll show what we're using and how we're using it. All that coming up right after this. always been an Optimax fan, and the new Mercury 115 horsepower Optimax is an awesome engine. Not only does it deliver the acceleration I want, but it's lighter, more powerful, and just as clean as most four strokes in its class. Optimax is 45% more fuel efficient than traditional two strokes. If you want that kind of power and performance working for you, go with the new 115 Optimax and go for the max. Mercury, number one on the water. The Corolla, it's not the destination, it's the drive. She came from over there! <laughs> Look at that one blast that thing. All right. At Bass Pro Shops, we know these are the times of your life. I got a fish here. He's ahead. <laughs> oh, man. Be ready for it. Look at that fish! That's a nice fish. fish. <laughs> no matter how you like to shop, Get more outdoors for your money with Bass Pro Shops. Big Mike's got one on from Bass Pro Shop. Bring him in, Mike. Oh, little guy. Yeah, look at this thing. Wow, hey, that is a little guy, but using plastics. And what's interesting, folks, is you can see how close to shore we are. And uh, Dan, is, is that where these fish are going to be this time of morning? Yeah, that's where they're at this morning, John. They're on the inside weed line. That was uh, actually a little smallmouth bass. Wow. That's what that was. So you kind of work around the piers, and what you can do is you got meat casting out on over at the top of the weeds with a spinner bait. You guys use the plastic on the inside, huh? Yeah, I'm flipping a jig in here trying to get bit. Mike's throwing a sticko. All righty. Hey, here we go, here we go. Uh, not a bass. I got a northern pike on here. But I got my new bass pro rod here, and I love playing the, these pike with this thing, Dan. That's a and, good fish. Yeah, that was right over on the top of the weeds there, buddy. Good fish. Nice northern. And that's the nice thing about fishing those spinner baits, folks. And all the lakes around Wisconsin in the fall. Whoops, there he goes. Whoa. All the lakes around Wisconsin in the fall, folks, you can fish those spinner baits over the top of the weeds. And the bass will actually use the weeds, uh, what's left of the weeds in September and October, too, huh? Absolutely. That's what we're looking for right there. Hey, here we go again on the spinner bait, you guys, on the spinner bait again. 
I don't know if it's a bass or a northern, but he, ooh, oh, nice northern. There northern. we go. Hey, I'll tell you, you guys can hang out with the bass there. I'll do the northern pike fishing. That's another nice one, man. Boy, did he crush that bait. Now, we got a little contest going, Dan, right, for the northern? That's Jim? right. We got a big fish for the day. All right. Whoa, he's not quite ready yet, man. Oh, there we go. That's fun. There we go. Good fish. That's not as big as the one I had before, though, that you let go. <laughs> that's got to be about 24 inches long. But that's another bonus thing about fishing these lakes around uh, southeastern Wisconsin. Not only Delavan here, but Lake Geneva's got a good population of northerns, too. And you, and you get them when you're bass fishing, yep, huh? That's what we're doing. We're just bass fishing. Now, what I'm doing is that we, you said we got deep water adjacent to this weed bed, Dan. Maybe yeah, you can explain to the folks what type of structure we got here. We got about 35 feet of water right out here, and we're fishing an inside weed line here. And uh, John's fishing over the top of the grass with a spinnerbait, burning it right over the surface. Okay. That's the second good fish you've had this morning. Hey, so, here we go, Dan. I knew it was just a matter of time before you connected on one. That's a, oh, nice a good bass. One, yeah. There you go, buddy. Hey, that's cool. That is cool. Oh, nice fish. Wow. That is beautiful. You know, Dan, at the top of the program, we were kind of discussing the, the fall bass fishing. and. Like I said, a lot of guys put their bass rods away, you know, late August, early September. But when you get into to October and November, you can still bass fish and Absolutely. do good? Absolutely, yeah. This is just a little largemouth. That's a nice one, though, really. Yeah, we're having to deal with the wind today. It's pretty windy out here if you look out over the but lake. But in the fall, do you, do you slow down your presentations or, or what type yeah, of structure I generally? Yeah, I slow down a little bit. Yeah. yeah. If we can find some wood, some stumps, different things like that, they'll stack up really good on the wood late in the fall. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Oh, Dan, 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 he's teaching us how to do this here. Here comes a little bass. Oh, well, you're, you're a tournament fisherman. I can see how fast you get those babies in. But this is kind of an interesting way to fish, folks. You know, I've used a lot of plastic worms in my day. You're good. Kiss them goodbye, yeah. And uh, I've never used one of these before, and you, you just kind of hook these babies right on the center. What are these called again? This is a sticko. Sticko. Yep. Okay. Five and three eighths of an inch long, and what we're doing, we're wacky worming it. Okay, which we're just, means? We're going to hook it right in the middle. Okay. Yep, so all you do is hook it right by the egg sack. Okay, hold just it up like steady right for there. a second. Yeah. That's amazing to me, and, and you cast out and you just let it sink in? Yeah, that's all you do. Just let it free fall underneath the dock. Uh, you can use them out deep weed lines, Uh huh. anything like that. When you're fishing out a little bit deep, you've got to be real patient with them. They sink really slow. On the spinnerbait again here, on the spinnerbait, I don't know if it's a northern or if it's a bass, but that one hit casting out again. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, nice bass. Oh, there we fish. go. There hey, go. hey, hey, guys, good look fish. at that guy. Holy cow. Where do you folks see this fish? There's a nice bass. There, there. Oh. Let's see if I can grab him. There we go. There's a nice bass, huh? Yeah. You know, a little football is. Now, the neat thing, too, about this Delavan Lake, Dan, is they got a, what, an 18 inch size limit here? Yep, that's what it is here. One fish, 18 inches long. Now, does that help a fishery? Yeah. Yeah, it helps them get a lot of big fish in the lake like that. Well, that's, that's a good fish. Yeah, that's a pretty chunky bass. Mike, is that one we can enter, or is it not too big? That's probably about 15, 16 inches. We got uh, 16 and a half. Good fish. 16 and a half inches. All right. Maybe I can win the Bass Pro Shop outing. You never know, right? But that's interesting, though. You guys cast in and me casting out with the spinnerbait, and I let that one sink, actually. Did you? Yeah. Let it down a little bit? Yeah. Uh, so those bass will have a tendency to hang out near deep water, huh? Yeah, that's what they're doing. Yeah. Ooh, here we go, here we go, folks. Moved out to some deeper water, didn't we, Dan? Yeah, we did, buddy. You got, you got a nice fish on, man? I don't feel too bad. All right. Jig and pig? Yeah, jig. Oh, look at that one. Turn around, hold that one up. That's a nice fish. Good fish, right there. And what we're doing here, folks, we're on an edge here, right? Yep. Hold that up, though, before you throw them back. That's a pretty fish. Doesn't quite qualify for the Bass Pro winner, but nice legal fish. You know, yep. that's well over 14. But tell the folks what happened. We weren't getting any fish up shallow, so you decided to move out? Yeah, we moved out. We're fishing the drop. We're in about 17, 18 feet of water. It's 13 right there, and it's a real sharp drop. Comes right down into good deep water. We're dealing with kind of a cold front condition, it seems like. Yeah, well, the wind's kind of on yeah. the northwest. Yeah, it's getting kind of cold. So we're just going to sit out here and drag a jig. John's working a uh, crankbait through the grass. Mike's throwing a drop shot. We're going to do whatever we can to catch some fish today. Now, as, we get, as the water cools down and you get later in fall, do the bass move deeper? They're going to move shallower. Shallower, okay. Yeah, that's what I found. Yep, they're going to move right up into two, three inches of water and go on a feeding frenzy. Folks, I'll tell you, Dan just caught that fish, and he's had about two or three consecutive bites on consecutive casts, and I have never fished 
this before, a jig like this. And what are you doing with this thing to get these fish to hit it? All we're going to do is throw it up on this flat right up here. Okay. Get, just keep the rod sideways like this, and all we're going to do is hop. And they're thumping it really hard, but it's really hard to get a hook in them out here in the waves. Yeah, I suppose. I'm struggling. I'm but so not moving it real fast, though, either, no. huh? Just throw it out there, put the rod tip down to the water. Okay. Let it sink to the bottom? Let it get down to the bottom. Click in and drag. Click in and drag. Got another one. Got another no, one. No, he's going to jump. Here Ooh, jump. Oh, no, it's no. gone. Oh, you just oh, missed man. it. Dumped it, huh? Yep. Ooh, I put the spinnerbait back on there for a second because you said to try that, slow rolling that, and it worked. I don't know what size fish this is, but it sure hit that bait hard, Dan. Good northern. Oh, big northern, folks. Big northern, folks. Big northern, folks. You just saw the boat. Let's see if we can see him here. Oh, yeah, that's a nice pike. Oh, yeah, that's a dandy. We don't have a frayble here, do we? Oh, no. oh look no, at him go. Whoa, there we go. We got a chance to win with this one, Dan, you think? We might have. Get the measuring Whoa. stick out. If I can get him out of here. There. Whoa, there we go. That's a, that's a, I think that's about a 30, 32 inch fish, man. There we go. Get him. There you go. There we go. There's a beautiful northern pike Whoa, on job. the spinnerbait. Wow. Hit that hard, too, buddy. He wasn't going anywhere. I had him hooked pretty good. But this is the spot, folks, where we've been catching bass. Maybe that's a good maneuver that I get this guy out of there for you, Dan. Oh, yeah. Well, they, they'll, they'll scare bass away, won't they? Yeah, they will. Yep. Boy, that's a pretty fish. I'll tell you, folks, this Delavan Lake is a great story. They poisoned this lake out, Dan, back in the late 80s, early 90s. DNR restocked, and it has been a very successful fishing program, hasn't it? Yes, it has been. We are fishing Delavan Lake in southeastern Wisconsin, a one-hour drive from Milwaukee, one and a half hours from Chicago, and five and a half hours from Minneapolis. For all your fishing news and more information on all our shows, visit lake-link.com, keyword Gillespie. John calls home. Look at that bass! Look at this walleye! Oh, oh, that nice oh, Look at that fish, folks! Hi folks, John Gillespie here. I ice fish over 100 days a year, and Frable is my choice for gear that helps me catch more fish and keeps me comfortable on the ice. Check out Frable's new flip-over shelters. They now feature modular seating. You can choose the number and location of seats that you need. You can easily stack four tubs and load them into a single pickup truck. And I know Frable has the best pullover shelters on the market. Save big money with a Big Boss water softener from Menards. It eliminates costly scale in pipes and cuts hot water heating bills. Plus, get cleaner dishes and laundry, shinier hair, and softer skin. On sale, $458. Replace your old water heater with an energy-efficient water heater by Richmond. This 50-gallon electric model is $144. A 40-gallon natural gas model is $195. Warm up to big savings at Menards. Save big money at Menards. your everyday adventures and the SUV that helps you conquer them. The comfortable, refined Toyota Highlander. Now with a more powerful engine and available third row seat. Hey, here we go, here we go, here we go. We had a wind shift here, folks, and we've had about an hour slow period, and it was just a matter of time, I guess, before we found them again. Oh, is that a nice pike? We got a winter pike on here, guys. This is a winter pike. This is a nice fish. This is going to win the Bass Pro Tournament, Mike. We're not it's a nice fish. <laughs> we don't have a Frable with us here. Good job, though, Dan. He's got it deep. Wow, he does have it deep, so yeah, I'm going to get we'll probably it. one crack at him. Oh, is that a nice fish? Whoa, there we go. Good nice, job. northern, beautiful fish. Wow, and I'll tell you, is that built nice, too, huh? Good and fat, isn't he? On the bass jig? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, we, I hope we got a players with us here, folks. Yep. Boy, there he is. We got him unhooked there. That is just a beautiful northern pike. And I'll tell you folks, this Delavan Lake is known for good northern pike fishing. I know, Dan, a lot of guys will come out here in the wintertime and set tip-ups and do really good on them. There he goes. Beautiful. Good job. And they'll do real well on those here. You know that? Yep. That was a nice northern. I thought you were the bass pro. You're a pretty good northern pike guy too, man. Well, you bass guys, you'll go anywhere to try and catch a fish. Are they, a lot of times, do you find them under these bridges though? Oh yeah, they'll be underneath here. Wow, they hang along the rocky shorelines in the shade. They like that? Yeah, they'll get right in there. 
You gotta, sometimes you got to fish where nobody else will go, John. Well, but you can get a bad back, though, doing this after a while, Dan. Yeah, you don't want to stand up when you set the hook. That's for <laughs> no, sure. That's true, too. Oh, you did pull on just oh, as we got through the, the bridge. bridge there. Well, you had to wait until you could stand up to set the hook. Oh, my gosh! This is a big bass, you guys. This is a real big bass. Look at that beautiful fish. Wow. Get there, him. there he is. Look there at that. Go. Nice job, man. Woo, woo. I'll tell you, Dan, you said you wanted to work the underneath of that bridge. Where was he? Just on the other side? Yeah, just on the outside right there, yeah. Boy, that is a nice bass. Look at that, folks. Good fit. That is a real nice bass. Now, again, why do they like the bridge areas like that? Well, there's rocks underneath there from when they built the bridge. Uh -huh. They got a little ditch cut in there. And uh, this is all a big mud flat. They'll just get right in there and swim back and forth in the rocks. Nice and quiet. Nobody bothers them. Wow, that's a pretty fish, folks. That fish. really is a yeah. nice bass. You know, don't get much better than that, buddy. No, I don't. Wow, there we go. Hey, folks, it's time now to announce this week's winners of the Mills Fleet Farm John Gillespie's Waters and Woods 2003 Fishing Contest. Bruce Fraser of New Berlin, Wisconsin is this week's first winner. Bruce caught this 49-inch muskie on Pewaukee Lake on a 10-inch jake. Dave Coons of Racine, Wisconsin moved into the winner's circle with this 16-inch perch caught on Lake Michigan on a glowworm. Todd Haberman of Mequon, Wisconsin boated this 33-inch, 13-pound walleye on Cedar Lake on a jig and minnow. And Dean Caroper of Sheboygan, Wisconsin rounds out this week's winners with this 23-inch smallmouth bass caught on Big Elkhart Lake on a booger tail. All of the winners will receive a $25 Mills Fleet Farm gift card and they'll be eligible for our end of the year grand prize drawing. To enter folks is simple. Just snap a picture of your trophy catch and stop in at your favorite Mills Fleet Farm store to pick up an entry blank. We also have hunting and fishing licenses. Mills Fleet Farm supports catch and release and keeping our waters safe and clean. Mills Fleet Farm, your fishing gear headquarters. Part of the value of this Hoover fold-away vacuum is that you can store it just about anywhere. But the real value is that Mills Fleet Farm has this powerful, full-featured Hoover bagless vacuum cleaner for $98.88. There are a lot of valuable health benefits to having a humidifier. And this quiet, two-speed Bemis whole house unit has a digital humidistat that automatically keeps a comfortable humidity level. It's just $78.88. It's all just part of the value of Mills Fleet Farm. We always get a little bit more for a little bit less. Look at this walleye! Oh, nice Look at that fish, folks! Hi folks, John Gillespie here. I ice fish over 100 days a year, and Frable is my choice for gear that helps me catch more fish and keeps me comfortable on the ice. Here's the original Pro Thermal tip-up. Don't be left in the cold with an uninsulated tip-up. The white insulation always keeps your ice holes from freezing. Tackle box, line clip, and easy storage make the Pro Thermal the only choice with tip-up technology. Hey, hey, I finally caught one on that weird worm there, buddy. <laughs> What's that thing called, that weird worm again? The wacky worm. The wacky worm. The wacky worm catches the little wacky bass. That's, that's cool. But that is, that's neat when they hit that. It's like a dee dee dee, you know, yeah, and then just come up. Yeah. Up, 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 up. Yep. That was kind of fun. Hey, hey, there we go. Mike's got one on now. We, got, we found the school of little bass back in here. Hey, there we go on the chicken pig this time. But Dan, are there times when you get back into like marinas like this around wood that you can find big fish? Oh, in the springtime when the water first starts to warm up, this is one of the, the first places that the big fish are going to move into to try to spawn. Oh, okay. Yeah, and you just got to remember when you're early in the year when you're fishing bass that are spawning, staging to spawn, it's always good to practice catch and release. Those Absolutely. Are what, they're what fills up, fills up the lake and let us come out and do what we're doing. As a matter of fact, speaking of catch and release, let's show the folks at home in a few minutes here before we close the show those big bass that the guys caught today, all right? Absolutely. Well, as we're closing our show today, one of the neat things that I want to talk about, Dan, is, is one of the reasons that the fisheries stay good is like when Bass Pro Shop has an employee tournament like they had today, mm -hmm. it's all catch and release, right? Absolutely, yeah. So how do they work that? They bring them in and they... We weigh, weigh them up is what we do. We measure them and weigh them. Yeah. And uh, you're only allowed to keep one fish per per person. Right. And the guy with the biggest fish gets a prize. Well, the neat thing is, folks, there were three big fish caught today, and we were sent back out to release them. So if you want to show the folks some of the size of some of these fish, I mean, that is, hold up for one second. That's, That's a, a good beautiful fish. largemouth bass. And one of the guys from Bass Pro Shop caught that one. Is that the winning largemouth? This is, good chance this is the yeah. winning largemouth right there. That was 4-2. But as you'll see, one. folks, how gently they handle these fish, and that fish will release just fine. Now, we got another one in there, Dan? Yeah, we got a couple more. All right, let's take a look at those. And they're not easy to catch, they're so lively. 
Oh, look at that bucket mouth. That's a good fish. Another Delavan Lake largemouth bass. That's a beautiful fish. Good fish right there. That's a four pound fish. Yeah. yeah. And we should say too that most of these fish were caught off a spot that we fished today and caught a couple of fish off, but it got too windy to fish yeah, over there. Yeah, it did, yeah. But let's show now. We got one smallmouth in here that we want to show too, folks. Wow, look, this and is look a good at that. Smallmouth. And look, oh, look, at look at the pretty coloring wow. on that fish. That is just gorgeous. That's a good fish. Well, That's Dan, hey, as we're closing the show, I, I want to mention to the folks at home that you're still guiding bass now through uh, the end of September, October, November, and we'll put your phone number up. People want to get out and do some bass fishing Absolutely. with you. Your specialty area is, is what area? Apple Canyon over by Galena. By Galena, Galena Illinois. Galena, Illinois. About Illinois, an yeah. hour and a half drive from Chicago. That's what it yeah, is. I should yeah. come over and fish with you. I learned a lot from you today. Thank I you. appreciate it. Had a good time today. All right, Dan. Thank you. Dan Hayes guides bass fishing all over the state of Illinois. For more information, give Dan a call. That phone number is 815-248-4348. 815-248-4348. Wow, look at all the Bass Pro guys over there. They're eating brats already. Oh, I found you, buddy. Hey, Mike, how you doing? How you doing, John? Are you Co hungry? Oh, I am. You're cooking Johnsonville's. Now, how did you do these? Well, what we did is we started a charcoal a little early. And uh, what we, we set them out there on the grill, and we're making sure that we turn them with the, of course, we don't want to pierce them or anything. We want to turn them with the brat turner or the tongs. That was nice to Johnsonville to take care of the Bass Pro guys today. It certainly was, and I thank the folks at Johnsonville a lot for doing that. Well, I want one. So here, put one in one my bun here, buddy. There you go. And I'm going to taste test this one because everybody else has already had oh, three or yeah. four of them. Here we go. Oh, you did a good oh, job. That looks good. Hey, thanks, buddy. Right there. Good day. You've got a grill full of Johnsonville brats. Then it happens. The flare-up. Don't panic. First, move the brats to safety. Second, cool those coals. Quick action now. We'll keep all that juicy flavor inside where it belongs. Come on. That's it. The day you learn that being a hero doesn't come without a price. Welcome to Heaven on a Bun. Welcome to Johnsonville. beautiful lakes, Wisconsin is a great place to fish. Call 1-800-432-TRIP or visit TravelWisconsin.com. Welcome back, folks. Well, it might be 95 degrees today, but we're up at the uh, at the Ducks Unlimited show up here in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and uh, when it's 95 degrees, that's when I really get excited about ice fishing, and I'm even more excited about ice fishing this year because wait till you see the Yamaha I'm running. We got Jim Drummond with us from Yamaha today, and this is the Rhino 660. I'm excited, Jim. You should be. We got you something very, very cool this year. You're going to love it. Well, when I take a look at this machine, I see a lot of neat things. I love the two seats. I love the gas pedal and the brake, but one thing I want to talk about when I travel in, in deep snow, no, I got the highest uh, clearance. You've got over 12 inches of ground clearance, plus it's got a full locking differential, so all four wheels will drive forward. That's exciting. Now, let me look at this, the roll bar here. This is kind of a neat deal, isn't it? It's a neat deal, especially when we put a top on here for you. A top I get on you this bet. thing this you year? Bet. And a windshield. What about speed? Uh, these are just under 40 miles an hour. Okay. Which is, which is the best top end of anything in the class. Now, four wheel drive? Four wheel drive. So you've got a selection of two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, or full locking, all four wheels driving. Wow, that's incredible. Now, I have ridden these side-by-side -side units before from another manufacturer, but I had a lot of problems with belts busting and that type of thing. Not with the not, Yamaha? Not, not, not going to happen. This is the Ultramatic transmission, the same one we use in the Grizzly. Uh, we don't have any belt problems with this thing. It's just been bulletproof. Well, I'm really excited about getting in this thing. And another thing here is the payload for ice fishing and for hunting. And this thing actually comes up. You bet. You can put 400 pounds in here and uh, it dumps. So at the end of the day, if you got a bunch of snow in here, drop the gate, tip it up, clean it out. Boy, that's fabulous. When I look at all the Frable buckets and tip-ups and everything that I can get in here, that's just outstanding. What other things about the Rhino will I like? This is the sportiest utility vehicle made. This We put the 4x4 magazine people in here. These are hardcore truck guys. We took them on stuff they didn't dare go on themselves. For a hunter or a fisherman, what makes this a, a real practical vehicle in your opinion? You know, you've got, you can haul two people. You've got all kinds of uh, capacity back here for your gear. 
It's got 12 inches of clearance, so you can go through some snow. And with a fully locking differential, if you do get it stuck, you should be able to back out. And we'll put a winch on here. If you do get it buried, you can get yourself out. One thing, yeah, one thing we talked about before was the fact that, uh, and you've ice fished with me a number of times, and we're going through heavy snow and slush. I'm gonna make it through with this? You'll do, you'll do very well. There's, there's no guarantees on any of that, but this will do better than anything else out there. Well, folks, I'll tell you something right now. I'm real excited about running this Rhino this winter, and uh, I am gonna get one of these, huh? You're gonna get one. Now, the folks out in the audience, when can they get one of these Rhinos from their dealers? The first ones show up at dealerships in October, and uh, we'll have another wave in, fe in February. That's exciting, man. I can't wait. Well, Jim, thanks. I really appreciate oh, it. Glad to have it's you. good to have Yamaha back this year. And I cannot wait for the ice to get out there on my Rhino, man. That is exciting. Without a Yamaha ATV, you're not going very far. The Grizzly 660 Automatic, the only ATV with push-button front diff lock and four-wheel independent suspension. Where you go now is up to you. Now get a 2,500 pound worn winch for just $69.95 with select models. Corolla. It's not the destination. It's the drive. She came from over there. <laughs> I'm here at MW Marine, and I'll tell you, folks, you just got to see this Alumacraft Navigator. It's a huge 16-footer with a 52-inch live well. Hey, it's even got a bait well. It's powered by a smooth, dependable 50-horsepower Mercury engine. It has two 7-foot-long locking rod boxes that will hold 10 rods comfortably. This package includes trolling motor, locator, and more for about $12,000. Get your new Mercury-powered boat from MW Marine today. Just keep the rod up. Big Dave's new favorite lure on Lake Michigan, the Bitzer Creek Z-Spoon. All right. All right. Oh, good job, you guys. It's not the one on the Z-Spoon. Oh, that's on the green Z-Spoon. You can troll them fast, you can troll them slow. They'll have the same great fluttering back and forth action. There we go, on the Z. All right, buddy. Well, on the old style flutter spoons, most of them are made out of aluminum. That's what happened. The fish would get it, get twisted up in your net. With the Z spoon, you got that light stainless steel. You bend it, it comes back to the original form every time. Oh, you know, another I'm, nice another one. Another nice coho. The Z spoon will not only catch coho, brown trout, chinook, lake trout. Wait till you see what it does on northern pike and walleyes. The Z spoon from Vincent Creek. Ask for it at your favorite retailer today. And folks, that is our show for today. Please join us. I don't know where we're going to fish yet, but we'll find a place somewhere. Until then, I'm John Gillespie, hoping to see you enjoying Wisconsin's waters and woods. The skies of shine all the Wisconsin woods and waters.